Okay, I'm, uh, I'm here with Wayne Souter, uh, who is a, a TI enthusiast and uh, an incredible open water, cold water marathon swimmer. And uh, we're gonna talk about the role that total immersion played in his ability to do a, a really historic crossing of the Irish Channel. Take it away, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Uh, gee, uh, when I when I started swimming, I, I started off doing a, an English channel um, in 2010. And the training for the English channel, I put a lot of training in, and, and towards the end of the training and, and before the swim, I was, I was getting to a point where I was mentally, mentally um, sick and tired of the training. I, just, I was struggling to do the, the, the kind of final days of training. In fact, so much so, I eventually decided to, to pull my date a, a month earlier because I couldn't face more training. It was that, yeah. it was that um, intense, the, the kind of training. And it was Can you describe a little bit about the training you were doing and, and yeah. what, what was your guideline for the training? What was the, the uh, plan you were following that led to this incredible experience of tedium? Yeah, the, the, uh, it was before, before, when I was training up for the English Channel, I hadn't heard about TI before that. And so I was, was following a, a plan that um, I had kind of developed myself, deciding that on the day I would need to do this many hours of, of swimming. Yeah. And, and therefore, uh, you know, kind of a month before I needed to, to, to do uh, you know, two thirds of that, and a month before half that. And, and, yeah. and so, so you basically had to endure a certain number of hours of swimming at various steps along the way in exactly. order to endure a projected number of hours on the day. Exactly, okay. spot on. And there was nothing clear about it. All I'd do is go and climb in the pool and just swim and swim and swim. And it just was so, yeah, just dull. Endure the distance, tolerate the tedium. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and, I, and basically, uh, you know, I broke and, and it could have maybe killed my English channel because a month before I could not do another Dover swim. You know, I was just yeah. that tired of it. So, but I did manage to go a month early and I managed to just do the swim um, on the day. Um, and it took? 20 hours and one minute, which isn't the 20 fast, hours and one minute. Yeah, not the fastest English channel I've ever done. But you endured 20 hours, which is pretty incredible accomplishment. Um, but coming out of that, I, I, I think because it took 20 hours, I never ever wanted to swim again. I thought that's it, I'm, I'm done with my swimming, swimming stuff. Um, How but, long had you been swimming at that point? Um, I'd been training reasonably solidly for, for about a year. Yeah, so, so you had only kind of seriously taken up swimming yeah, a, a, year a year earlier. A, a, and all, I, within a year after s taking up, you swam the English Channel, which yes. is one of the greatest accomplishments. And yet at the same time, within a year, you killed your appetite yeah. for swimming. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It was that, that kind of ramp up. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. And, and so uh, I, I, for about six months, I, I didn't touch the water. And, and I don't know why I went in for a for a kind of a dip and we've got a 50 meter pool near where I live and uh, went in and in the lane next to me there was this gentleman swimming up and down and I'd never seen anything like it before in all of the kind of training I'd done. Um, this guy swam up and down, he had the smoothest stroke, he, he had half the stroke rate, I was, I was s s kind of going like mad in my lane, he had half the stroke and was going twice the speed, it was impossible. And, and eventually I, I, I collared him at the end of the swim and, and kind of chatted to him in the showers and, and, and quizzed him on what, I'd never seen this, what was he doing? And he'd mentioned that he'd bought a, a, a TI DVD um, and then he said he followed it up with buying the TI book. And, and I went home that night, kind of read, read on the website and, and I ordered my own DVD. Mm -hmm. TI lessons, 10 lessons was one of those DVDs. Yeah. And Perpetual <coughs> Motion Freestyle in 10 Lessons, Self-Coach Workshop. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. And it was brilliant <laughs> and, and because it broke down the swim. And, and I watched the first two or three lessons. I made, I made hand notes and I went to the pool and I Superman glided for about two weeks. That's all I did. For two <laughs> weeks I did Superman glide. Yeah. And, and I, 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 in one of the videos you cross a pool in, in three, 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 three glides. Three, three glides. push-offs. And because that was a 22 meter pool. A 20, oh, yeah. I was wondering about yeah, that. 20 meter pool, 20 meter pool. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so that was uh, almost like a, a goal for me uh, to see 
so when I was first doing it, it would take me about five or six yeah. push, push offs to do it. But over the next two weeks, I could see that number coming down. It was you yeah. know, down to four and then, and then three and a half. And, and so it just got better and better. Each evening I went down. When you, when you first did a Superman gliding, you could really feel you could sustain some travel without doing anything. What sort of reaction, what sort of mental um, <coughs> engagement did you have with that experience compared to how swimming yeah. had felt? I mean, then that is a, a, a really kind of good point to highlight there because it was so different to what I've been doing before where you climb in and you just flay away and you just do the hour or yeah. the two hours. You, you don't think about anything else. You just cannot desperately wait for that hour to end. <laughs> and, and versus there, I was climbing the pool and all I'm doing is pushing off. I mean, how, it couldn't be more dull. Yeah. But actually, it, was, it couldn't be more fascinating yeah. because as you're gliding, you're going, actually, if I bring my shoulders in just another inch, mm -hmm. I'm more streamlined. If yeah. I, oh, are my legs dragging? And suddenly yeah. you've got this whole mental and, and, and intellectual um, aspect to the swim. Yeah. And, and You're developing the instinct to do it in an examined way. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and, and it revolutionized my swimming. Suddenly swimming became fascinating and energizing and something I could control, yeah. something I could improved by using my mind, mm -hmm. not just by spending hours in the pool. And because I'd never even done reps before. Yeah. I'd, all I just did climbed just in and swam for two hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I, I'd never even done hundreds at certain speeds or anything. I'd never yeah. even broken it down to that level. And so this was a, a revolution to my, yeah. to my swimming. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and um, so worked through the DVD and became a far better swimmer. Uh, I decided that I needed some outside input because it's quite difficult to self-analyze. Yeah. And I got hold of, of Tracy at, at Swim Solutions in Windsor, and she's got this beautiful indoor... That's indoor TI coach, coach Tracy Bauman. Yep, she's a fantastic coach. I mean, just incredible. And, yeah. and she could see where I was coming from. She didn't, she didn't try and force me to, to do different things. She looked at where I was in my stroke, yeah. and, and I... I I couldn't afford to come too often, um, so so b due to my work pressures. So I, d I decided I could go kind of once a month, yeah. get some input, and then go and practice, practice. that during the month. Yeah. And it was just the best thing I ever did because in that session, she could give me two or three tips yeah. that I could then take back. And you'd have a structure for the next month of Completely. practice, and you'd have you know distinct things you're working on rather than just back and forth. Completely. And yeah. again, it just... A purpose stimu for the Purpose, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and stimulated again the swim. It just became interesting. Suddenly yeah. you're doing something interesting rather than just trying to kill hours. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah I love it. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so through that, I became a far better swimmer than my English Channel swim. Yeah. Um, my English Channel swim, I think I was at times doing about 1.5 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Um, and, and by the time I was finished with my TI, uh, kind of work with Tracy and in the pool, I was doing, I was able to consistently do a little over three kilometers an hour. So it really so picked up your speed. Yeah. And, and, and with, with less effort. Right. Yeah, with less effort. It was amazing. So uh, t took that and, and suddenly I, I, I had a belief that actually I was interested in swimming again. Yeah. yeah I actually was loving this. And, and, and I'd done the channel, so I was like, well, what else do you do if yeah. you've done the channel? And, and so I, I did a bit of research and I was interested to do a swim that was both difficult, channels are always difficult, but, but also fascinating and, and intellectually challenging. And so I needed to do a swim no one had ever done. Looked at the map and, mm -hmm. and eventually found the swim from the Mullican Tire across the Northern Ireland had never been done due to the strength of the tide, strength of the currents, the cold water, a number of other factors, jellyfish and, and, and weather. Um, and spent hundreds of hours literally piecing together a swim. I did two uh, f uh, site visits, kind of recce's of Ballycastle. I flew up there, put a team together, found yeah. a local captain, met with the harbour master and the coast guard and, and you know, every single person I could possibly meet with up there mm -hmm. and managed to put the swim together. And, and eventually on the 26th of August uh, 2012, um, we kicked off on the Mullican Tire side and uh, swam across, not remotely close to this plan we'd carefully put together over the last you know, 18 months. It wasn't even close to that plan. We swam a completely different plan, but somehow we yeah. managed to do it but anyway. But you had the comfort of a plan to start with, which is, is really that is, important. That is true. Even, and, but the ability to adapt if conditions don't suit the plan, you 
yeah, yeah. You, and you do. And I had a great boat crew, incredible boat crew, who then adapted as we went along because the currents were completely different on the day yeah. than they were supposed to be in, the, in our simulations. Um, but yeah, so swam for for twelve hours. It was it was cold, but the 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 how cold exactly? <laughs> it was running just on twelve degrees. Twelve degrees, which is fifty two Fahrenheit. So twelve hours at twelve degrees, which is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, the the uh, and during the day um, at about six hours, I was feeling the cold. I was I was tired. I think you had. Mm -hmm. Six hours into a swim, no matter how fit you are, you, you get a mental yeah. challenge point yeah. and you've got to get over that. And, and I was feeling incredibly cold and, uh, and I was starting to moan and whine at the boat and my mm -hmm. feeds weren't warm enough and yeah. I was really in a, quite an unhappy place. This is only halfway through. Yeah, yeah. I don't know because my, my rule is Frida Streeter, an amazing lady yeah. down in Dover. She, she taught me something for my English channel and I, and I used it on my English and I, I've used it ever since. She said, never look forwards and never look back. Yeah. And that's so true. You if have you, to be if you in the do, stroke you're taking at that moment. Exactly. If you do look forwards, it just, it never comes closer. You know, yeah. or you do look back at the cliffs. They never, ever go away. You just yeah. feel like you're stationary. Now, I, I, I don't put this anywhere near in the category of what you've done, but I've done several marathons. I've done Manhattan Island Marathon twice, Tampa Bay Marathon, mm -hmm. and what has gotten me through is exactly that philosophy. Um, you know, I don't even look forward to the next feed. You're kind of swimming from feed to feed. Yeah. You kind of have divided yeah. the distance, not into swimming across whatever channel, but you're swimming to the next feed. But I find that what got me through those swims was I was always only focused on the stroke I was taking at that moment and with a specific targeted focal point as well, drawn yes. from training. Did you make use of that? Very much so. Uh, again, it's, it's, it is weird. Once you, once you can intellectualize your stroke, and, and that's what TI gives you, you, you can oddly think about it all the time, right. even on the day. <laughs> on the day, yeah. Even on the day. No, it's just become degrees. habit, literally. You're, you know, one of the things that I talk about is you're not just wiring in movement patterns, but you're also wiring in a way of thinking yes. so that when you're in a condition like that, whether it's in a race with a lot of distractions or whether it's in a, a really long, really cold, really difficult swim, you're, all of that difficulty is pushed to the periphery because at the center of your radar is the focal point you've chosen at mm -hmm. that period in the swim. Mm -hmm. And that's what your practice does. Mm -hmm. You just, is that, is that how it went that's down? That's exactly how it, how it is. You, you're, there are times when you, you're doing, in, in, in that particular swim, I, I did 30,000 strokes. Yeah. Yeah, you go, how, how could you pick up a piece of paper 30,000 times? Never mind, do 30,000 strokes. You know, yeah. it, it's, you, you think it's impossible. But on the day, you get into this hypnotic state and you, you're able to, to do that. And, mm -hmm. and, and so, so you, through the, the training, you, you, your body just gets into a rhythm that you yeah. can get into. But, but even on the day, I, I continuously kept checking my stroke and mm -hmm. continuously kept going, is this a good stroke? Are yeah. you gliding? You know, are yeah, you, right. is your head in the right position? Yeah. Even on the day, I mean, it, uh, you'd think on the day you'd, you'd, you'd put all that aside and you just, mm -hmm. you just like let go and swim. But for me, yeah. I was but no, able it's, to... It's become a habit at that point because it's what you've done in practice. You associate specific targeted thoughts with your swimming and you know we 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 came up with those thoughts because they make your stroke more efficient, yeah. more effective, which makes it easier to swim the distance for sure. But at the same time, I think the more powerful aspect of them, through my experience in marathon swimming, has been that it's what it's what you stay occupied with during that long day of swimming. No, so that's absolutely true, and, and 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 it gives you a focus. You know. If you do do a really good stroke, that's yeah. one less stroke you perhaps exactly, have to do. You know, exactly. and that's all you focus on. You know, I've on. moved a little bit clo closer to the goal than if I didn't take a stroke that was that good. I'm exactly. literally, I, I have exactly. the same thought process. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to move the water as I start the stroke. I want to move my body forward yes. because if I move the water, I won't get there as soon. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And at the six hour point, in fact, seven, eight hours, I was. I was going, to going downhill, I was getting colder and colder, yeah. I was eventually, I was, I was genuinely, I was quite concerned I was getting hypothermic yeah. because I started feeling better at one point and I was feeling that's pretty impossible to feel better if you're really cold yeah. and, uh, and I hadn't changed anything. And so I started saying to the guys on the boat, how far to go? And that was a rule I'd never ask. Yeah. 
But I started saying, I need to know, because I was in my mind, I'm going, look, I can do an hour of this, but no more. You know, yeah. I needed to know if I should pull out now, yeah. or if it's an hour, I'll just buckle down and do it. Yeah. And the guys wouldn't tell me this. They said, just, we'll tell you on the next feed, you know, yeah. and I get to the next feed and I said, look, we, 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 we just do this, you know, and they'd get me two, two, three more feet. And eventually I was like, I want to know. Yeah. I want to know how far we are. And oddly enough, I still didn't look. So in my mind, I guess maybe I didn't want to know, but I, yeah. you know. And um, so eventually they, they broke down. They said, you got 1.6 to go. I was like, 1.6? I, I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. I was great. And, and, and they went, yeah, go. I went, yeah, go. And off, and off I went. And, and, and again, you know, being, I was just, every stroke, I was like, just, I wanted the pain to end. Mm -hmm. and, and so every single stroke, I was just focused on the perfect stroke, just yeah. absolutely getting that yeah. right and, and driving hard. Yeah. And I started warming up because mm -hmm. I started working hard because I, I had this, uh, this little goal of 1.6 left. So yeah, yeah. I could do that. And, and, and so I did it hard. Well, actually, 30,000 30, strokes in, in 12 hours is a fairly low rate. That, that would be a fairly low rate. So I could, I could understand that once you picked your rate up, that you would you would start warming, warming up. up. So yeah. yeah, it was probably just a little. Well, it was cold. Yeah. And so so I warmed up. The next feed, they said. So first year, I didn't. It was in fact 1.6 nautical miles in my mind. They're 1.6 yeah. kilometers, but so never mind. But uh, next feed, they said 1.4, and I was like. Oh, only 0.4, like, come on guys, are you really telling me the truth? Yeah. Tears are promised, go, okay, fine. Next feed, it was 0.8, and I was like, whoa, I could feel the, the coast coming in. Yeah. And the next feed, so I'm coming up, I'm thinking it must be 400, you know, we must be kind of really closing in on this. And the guys all, as I pop up, they go, well, you're doing brilliantly, how's your feet go, go, you're doing brilliantly. I'm like, oh, fantastic. Anyway, I go down. In retrospect, when I talk to, when I talk to my crew afterwards, and they go, oh, the reason we did that is because we didn't, we didn't dare want you to ask how far we go, because we'd come around the, 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 the north corner of Ireland, and we'd missed the corner. So, we, yeah. so we'd been working our way up the coast, closing in on the coast, mm -hmm. but then we missed the corner. Yeah, because the tide was pushing you past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so we missed the corner, and suddenly we were 2.4 miles off the coast. Yeah. So 1.6, 1.4, 0 0.8, 2.4. I mean, how would they explain <laughs> that to me, yeah. you know, to, to kill me? Yeah. And so they just, they didn't ask. And, I, and by that time I was swimming so hard, I was feeling warm, and I never asked again. Yeah. And, um, and a couple of, about four hours after that, I finished. And wow, so. that's a fantastic story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thanks so much.